is he going? Isn't he from Nazareth? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Is he headed to Jerusalem? Do you think Jerusalem is safe? Does he know the plate is here? Where is he going? Does he know the city is dangerous? Does he know the Pharisees are watching? Is this the one we've been waiting for? Could this be the Messiah? Where is he going? The crowds are singing, Hosanna! Should I lay down my cloak? Is this the beginning of the end? Should we follow? Should we watch? Should we sing Hosanna? Stay awake. He's on the move. Where is he going? Listen. Where is he going? Watch. Where is he going? Stay close. Where is he going? Sing Hosanna. Hosanna, amen. Palm Sunday invites us to wonder where he is, where is he going? Where are we headed? What have we done and left undone this week? How have we left Jesus behind? But the good news is that Jesus never leaves us, so trusting that no matter what we do or don't do, this story ends with love, let us pray. God, forgive us for the times when we do not trust your word and do not follow where you lead. We long to be the ones who can go into the village ahead of you. Forgive us when we play it safe, God, forgive us for forgetting that you are always coming towards us. You are drawing near like a king on a donkey. Help us find you in our midst, Creator God. Forgive us for the moments when we choose greed over generosity, or we choose our self-image over our loyalty to you. Give us the courage to be unabashed in our faith. Give, Give us the strength to throw our coats on the road. Son of David, Give us conviction to shout your name from the rooftop. Give us the wisdom to sing Hosanna. With hope in our hearts, we pray to you, Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So we have new faces here with us, and they may not know what to do, so can we show them? Are you ready? Okay. Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. Okay, I think they know what they're supposed to do now. Let's do it again. Okay, you ready? Good morning, friends. Good morning, Oh, you guys make me really happy. Hi. I loved seeing our parade outside. Wasn't that fun? Yeah? I wonder, have you ever seen other parades? Have you been to a parade before? What kind of parade have you been to? Pickle parade. The what parade? Pickle parade. Pickle parade. <laughs> it was a it was a thing where you would uh, take a truck and with the trailer you would decorate it and then the light parade pretty much. Light parade? Fourth of July parade? Ooh, Fourth of July parade. That is good. Okay, so I wanted to tell you, why don't you picture something with me? Okay, have you ever seen a presidential parade? So when the president rides around, he rides in a big black car. There are flags on the front of it that wave. There's a big seal on the side of the door. And when he has parades, there are people that play bands and march, and they will march in front of the car and the car goes slowly and he waves at everybody and people will line the streets all just to get a glimpse at the president, to say, I saw the president. And when, they, when he drives past, do you know what they yell? Hello, welcome, hi, I love you, hi. They are so excited to see the president drive past in the big black car. Can you picture it? People lining the streets all to get a glimpse. 
But that's what Palm Sunday was for Jesus. But see, he wasn't president. He didn't arrive in a big black car. Do you know what he arrived in on? A donkey, a, a calf donkey. Yeah, Jesus came into Jerusalem riding a little baby donkey. Is that very impressive? No, oh, it wasn't. A, oh, it was. To, that's impressive to you, Ollie? I like that. He didn't come in a limo. He didn't come in a fancy airplane. He did not even come on a gorgeous, regal camel. He came on a common little donkey. But the people lined the streets up and down, and they waved their palm branches. They waved them. That's how they excited they were. And then they said, they yelled out, Oh, what do you think they yelled out? Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then they would yell out. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then they would yell out. Hosanna to the son of David. And then over and over as they waved their branches, they would just yell. Hosanna. Hosanna means rejoice, welcome. So many words that Hosanna can mean. But they waved their branches, their palm fronds. And as he walked down that street, and as he rode his donkey and waving at all the people, they waved back. And all they wanted to do was to be there to say, I saw Jesus. I saw him. I waved at him. He looked at me. How special am I? How special would you feel if you were waiting in line and the president waved at you? Really cool. You go to school and tell all your friends. That's how those people felt that day. They got to go back to their friends and say, he looked at me. He waved at me. He knows me. They celebrated. But guys, the celebration didn't continue. Over the next seven days of Holy Week, we're going to learn what happened. It wasn't all cheers. It wasn't all joy. But that's okay, because we know how the story ends. If you don't know how the story ends, will you come find me after church and let me tell you? I want to make sure you know the most exciting story. Will you ask me? Hey, can we pray together? Okay. Dear God, thank you for your son. Thank you for letting him come, riding a donkey, to love us. Let us always celebrate in the joy and the tears. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to hear you over the racing thoughts of our mental to-do list or our desire to fit in. Sometimes it's hard to hear you in this noisy world. So just as you stop traffic in Jerusalem, stop traffic here. Pause the rush, open the gates, dwell among us until your word is here is all we can hear. We are listening, we are laying down our cloaks, amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to, open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed in the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. 
You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. When you hear the word Hosanna, you are welcome to wave your palms. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. My middle son told me a great joke this week. Are you ready for this? If April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? What? <laughs> what do they bring? Pilgrims. Pilgrims. Get it? The Mayflower Pilgrims? Oh, no. There we go. There we go. We're getting it. Mayflowers bring pilgrims. Arlington has seen our own sort of pilgrims this weekend, complete not with palm branches and cloaks, but with glitter, rainbows, and custom jean jackets as Taylor Swift performs for three nights at the Cowboys Stadium. My own family saw pilgrims come from Lubbock and Plano and Oklahoma City to seek out and pay homage to their Swifty queen, <laughs> waving signs and shouting out their traditional welcome. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. It's a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> And just like those pilgrims, it's pilgrims who overflow in our gospel story this morning. Pilgrims who have come seeking a religious experience at the time of Passover. Pilgrims who have come to Jerusalem seeking to fulfill their ritual calling. To pray and hope and cry, Hosanna. Hosanna, save us expressing their hope that their Messiah can save them. Now there's one special pilgrim who comes into Jerusalem, even though for him it means certain death. As Jesus' popularity had grown, the Jewish leaders had started plotting his death, funnily enough, to try and keep the peace. He is greeted by a crowd of pilgrims offering the traditional pilgrim blessing to one another. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the name of the Lord. At the sight of Jesus, they spread the cloaks on the ground and wave palm branches in the air, taking selfies by the Taylor Swift sign. Okay, maybe not that last one. But it's a celebratory vibe, as Miss Brooklyn told us, as Jesus is welcomed like a conquering military hero or a king by popular acclaim or a pop star. But he's not just any king, the Messiah, the one they had all been waiting for. Now, we hear a version of this story every year on Palm Sunday with different views from different Gospels. One unique thing in Matthew's telling is that somehow Jesus rides both a donkey and a colt. Well, I always imagined him kind of surfing with one foot on each animal. There's another level to the meaning of these animals. For Matthew and his Jewish audience, it was important to see Jesus fulfilling the scripture from the prophet Zechariah and the Psalms. The donkey is what a king on his coronation day would ride into the city. It is the sign of peace. The colt is the meek and humble animal of farmers, contradicting the imperial power and domination system that ruled that day. And that's not the only thing worth paying extra attention to in this story. You see, immediately preceding Jesus' triumphal entry, Jesus heals two blind men, restoring their sight, and maybe reminding us of another man born blind who was healed, and the religious leaders who remained blind. It's almost as though Jesus is asking us to see something different in this parade to see beyond the surface level, to see what God is doing in the midst of this Passover pilgrimage. Seminary professor, the Reverend Dr. Thomas Long, invites us to see not just this surface level, but to see the undercurrent of God's intention going on. They're almost like bifocals of faith 
that are required to see the deeper understanding here. <coughs> On the surface level, it's all chaos. Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims spilling out of every nook and cranny. A city that is in turmoil on Jesus' arrival, and the Greek word is like seismic effect. On the surface level, Jesus is seemingly riding into his death, powerless to stop the religious and Roman leaders collaborating in plotting his betrayal and crucifixion. On the surface level, everything is noisy, random, unpredictable, actions left a chance. No regular person has any real power. On this surface level, the ones in charge include Herod as king, Caesar as lord and son of God, and Pilate as governor. But if we seek a little harder, if we look for that other level, we see a different story emerging. A story where God is in control. Where Jesus has planned out this prophetic sign action by reserving his donkey and colt ahead of time. Even anticipating possible objections. On, on this other level, no one is taking Jesus' life. He is voluntarily giving it up to fulfill the goal of reconciliation. He is no ordinary victim, but instead is freely submitting his life for us. On this level, as Dr. Long puts it, the rhythm is not random or unpredictable, but instead the steady, undeterred cadence of the will of God. On this level, the one is charged is simply Jesus. Jesus as King. Jesus as Lord and Son of God. Jesus as Messiah. The city doesn't seem to know who this Jesus guy is. And the answer offered, a prophet from Nazareth, doesn't quite describe all of him. We have crowds in our world who are still functioning on that level, trying to understand who Jesus is and where he fits in all that drama. And then we have this burgeoning community of disciples, men and women who have received sight, who have had demons expelled, who are beginning to see this second level, who are beginning to understand there is more than meets the eye with Jesus. I was particularly struck by this image of bifocals because it gave me a helpful way to process this last week and the weeks and months and years before. On this surface level, we see children shot dead in their church schools and right here in Arlington. We see a continued refusal by our elected officials to take any action on mass shootings in this country. Instead, we see legislation directed at harming some of the most vulnerable in our midst, our transgender friends and their health care providers. On this surface level, we see freedom and gun ownership and a former president made into idols, idols that don't deserve our worship. We see cancer and COVID-19 wreck our families with no rhyme or reason. We see people only out for themselves, not caring who they hurt as they work their way up the economic ladder. And so it is our responsibility and our challenge then as people of faith to tilt our bifocals and look for that other level, to look for that divine action and rhythm. I tilt my spectacles of faith and I see God present in the hundreds of Tennessee students flooding their legislature and planning walkout protests at their school. I see the hope that no one is above the law. I see our own church planning youth mental health first aid classes so that we can better respond to the need of, our t of teens in our community. 
I see a community of care here at Westminster that shows up when people are sick and hurting. I see a long, frustrating, potholed road ahead, led by Jesus on a donkey and a colt. And yet somehow this road, it winds, it arcs, it bends toward justice. If only we don't abandon the work of God, the work of peace. If only we can stick by Jesus' side. Palm Sunday presents us a choice. Which level will you inhabit? Which level will you engage Which level gives you hope and the possibility of peace? And which level is there only despair? And if we have eyes to see that other level with the undercurrent of God's hand, then our challenge continues. Where are you headed? Two roads diverge in early Palestine, one to betrayal, one to the cross. One to weakness, one to unimaginable strength, one to self-preservation, and one to self-sacrifice. Where are you headed? To get lost in the chaos, to trust what only lies before you, to believe the only reality is the one in front of us? Are you headed to drown in despair and hopelessness, wasting away, waiting for the Messiah to come? Or are you headed to this other level, to see Jesus not just as a prophet, but as the Son of God and the Messiah who is here to save us? Are you headed to follow Jesus all the way, even if it seems foolish, scandalous, criminal? Will you follow Jesus all the way through his betrayal and trial to the crucifixion? Will you show up at his grave weeping and seeking to care for his body? Will you hold fast to the promises of God, even if they seem far away, even if they don't seem possible, even if all logic defies them? If we are to take Holy Week seriously, if we are to follow Jesus to the table for the Last Supper and to the cross for the last breath, then we cannot only head out on one level. We have to trust that God is working on another level, turning evil into good. When we parade with Jesus to the cross, we have to trust that God won't let this be the end. Because this is who Jesus is. Someone who turns graves into gardens, who creates new life out of the old, who submits to his own death that we all might live. In the recent captivating best picture movie, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, there's another multi-level, multi-universe fight going on. Our wise and gentle hero, Wayman, He resists the traditional expectations around fighting, saying, You tell me that it's a cruel world and that we're all just running around in circles. I know that. I've been on this earth just as many days as you. When I choose to see the good side of things, I'm not being naive. It is strategic and necessary. It's how I learn to survive through everything. This is how I fight. Having a multi-level view doesn't mean that pain and rage and loss and grief aren't real. It doesn't mean that Jesus won't really suffer the whipping and the thirst and the crucifixion. But it means it is not the only thing left in the world that there is a kingdom worth fighting for. At this triumphal entry, Jesus indicates that he is going to fight, not in a way that makes sense on the surface level, but in a way that fully follows God's vision of a healed world. Jesus heads to the cross, 
fighting for the kingdom of God through the only way that will defeat sin and death forever. Not through more violence, but through surrender. Not through oppressing the oppressors, but instead by setting everyone free. So where are you headed? Discipleship compels us to not take the easy path, but instead to walk with Jesus through the parade into this city and up to the cross. Within the chaos and commotion of Palm Sunday and our world today, where are you and which way will you go? These are the questions that have guided us through Lent as we have been seeking our honest questions for deeper faith. Have our questions shaped your behavior? Changed the path you're on? Where are you headed? May it be closer and closer to Jesus. Amen. gathered here week after week, seeking a deeper faith and a deeper experience with the divine. The time is drawing near. Jesus is entering Jerusalem. How will we greet him? With hosannas or crucify him? Where are we headed? Will we follow him all the way to the cross?
is that he lived what As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness of fear in this world. Let us pray together. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our 